Thanks for having me. I remember uh, uh, watching this online. Actually, one of my favorite filmmakers, J.J. Abrams, had a really inspiring TED Talks called The Mystery Box. So it's kind of uh, cool to see myself up here also. So to the TED uh, committee, thank you for having me. Humbled and honored and grateful to share a little bit of my life and maybe my experiences with you this evening. And hopefully you, you, you get a little bit of it and it can inspire you and something to take home. But before I do, if I could just show you a little video of what I've been doing, I guess, for the last uh, eight years. Yeah, so there we go. Kind of, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. So as uh, uh, Steven Spielberg says, I also dream for a living, I guess. Uh, the importance of imagination and creativity is kind of something I want to tackle today because it's kind of the business that I'm in. This uh, quote kind of stuck out to me, uh, and I'm glad our previous speaker proved Einstein right because I couldn't agree with Einstein uh, uh, anymore. Uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. I don't know if you can agree with me on that, but I, I believe that in my heart because, to, I mean, to be honest, that's all I really have is my imagination. I, uh, I didn't finish school. I, 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 uh, I, was, I had that cliche story. I was third year in college. I went to Santa Clara University in, in, uh, in the Bay Area. To be honest, I went to college to play golf. I, I had a kind of a free ride. I, that was my first dream was to be a professional golfer, but when I got into uh, Santa Clara, I realized that it's gonna, uh, that wasn't really going to happen because the competition uh, was, was quite tough. But uh, filmmaking and storytelling has always been a part of my life. I kind of grew up around it. My grandfather was an actor. My father was a director. And so production and, and uh, creativity, imagination was kind of my playground. And when I saw this quote, I said, you know what? I do have imagination and maybe that's all I can bring with me. So I remember I was in my, I was in a, it was even a religion class in Santa Clara that they make you take there. And it was one exam and um, I said, you know, I've had enough of this. I, I just couldn't take it anymore, but the golfing wasn't going well. I wanted to tell stories. And you know, Hollywood was about a four or five hour drive south. So I was like, you know what? So on the exam, I actually wrote a goodbye letter to the school. I, I didn't know the question. I didn't know the answer to those questions. I didn't study for it. So I just wrote, okay, my name is Paul Sherry, I'm going to leave right after this exam. I was the first to finish because, you know, I probably wrote a paragraph. And I literally packed up my stuff, told my roommate, look, you got to rent my room out. Um, I'm going to, if, if you don't find someone to rent it, I'll have to pay for it. But I'm going to Los Angeles and I'm going to try to tell stories for a living. So this is around 2004. So that's why I really believe that imagination is more important. And then I'll kind of take you on my journey um, to uh, how I'm got to be in front of you guys uh, this evening. I ask a lot of people, uh, where has your imagination taken you? I mean, do you guys imagine? Yes? If you haven't yet, I uh, suggest you uh, start uh, after this uh, event. It's a wonderful, it's a beautiful thing, something you can do for free. And the reason why I find it so amazing, this word imagination, is it's taken me to places I couldn't have even imagined of. So that, that's like the, kind of the irony of it, right? Um, when I was younger, I met this guy. Um, you guys know this guy, E.T.? I think I was you know, six, seven years old when I recall the first time I saw this film. It was probably the first film I saw as a child, and my mother uh, confirms this. Uh, actually, if you go to my home, I actually have a life like E.T. there, because it, it taught me to imagine. At seven years old, I watched this film, and it taught me that I can actually have a friend that's from outer space. I mean, how cool is that? Or I can have an imaginary friend, that matter of fact. And, and, and I did that as a child. And it just, that's when my relationship with my imagination just took off. And ever since I was a young child, I imagined and I imagined. And that's why I feel that taking up golf, well, I played golf at a, at a young age, it kind of was uh, helping me in what I do today, is tell stories and make films. Because if you know the sport of golf, actually imagination and mental toughness is is, is, is what makes it go. You need to imagine that shot before you hit it, and kind of what I do now in, in, in telling stories and making films. So, yes, so I'm in the business of turning imaginations into reality. That's kind of what I do. So 2004, I kind of dropped the books, went to Los Angeles, and for about two years, uh, I had to work. I, I was jobless, so I actually, uh, in the previous talk, I could relate that I actually worked in a blockbuster video, because the perks there was you get to rent films for free. 
I remember Quentin Tarantino said, well, he, of course he used his profanity, but I won't repeat what he said, but he goes, you know, F film school, just watch movies, just watch films. That's your education right there. And I took that to heart. I was like, well, just watch films. So I said, you know what? Go to Blockbuster, get a job there. In return, I get to take home about five free movies a night. And I watched everything from horror to romantic comedies to, to B movies. And I just educated myself that way. And it really set a solid foundation to kind of what I do today, turning my imaginations into a reality. And that's where I kind of encourage a lot of people because I've met a lot of people that, that talk, but I always like, show, show it to me. And that's kind of the hard part because we all can imagine, a lot of people imagine, but showing that imagination to an audience is the real challenge. It's not easy. I wish I could talk to a, to a, a tech person out there and create an app that you can just plug into your brain and then it just projects what you imagine. And you know, I'd, I'd make so many films, but it's just not the case. But maybe 20 years from now, there, there would be something like that. Uh, you never know. 2009, so from 2004 to about 2009, I, uh, I was working. I was doing all these odd jobs from a production assistant standpoint to apprenticing for cinematography. I then got into advertising, started telling 30-second stories. Uh, I didn't want to really get into advertising, but it, it was opportunity, so I took it. It led to this, my first film in 2009. Not many people know about it because uh, and one person just called me up and said, hey, you know, I like your commercials. I like your TV commercials. Would you like to do a film? I said, sure. And when I put the phone down, I was like, how do you make a movie? I mean, all I know is how to watch them. And I successfully made a journey home. Uh, I, I would like to think uh, it was a good film. Some people do say that. But when I watch it today, I kind of cringe, you know, because it's like, what was I thinking back then? But, you know, every project, you only get better. After I made this first film, I thought that was it. Hey, I'm a movie director. I'm going to do films for the rest of my life. But no, no, nobody called me. I, I was still doing TV commercials, which is fun, which, which kind of uh, paid the bills, and I was enjoying that. But I wanted to make cinema. I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to put what was in my mind, uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So that's what I had to do. In uh, 2011, I... I had to produce, I had to direct, and I also co-wrote a film called Thelma. I had to take action. No one was calling me up. I thought I had made it with the first film, but apparently that's not how it is. So I encouraged myself, look, you can't just stay in your room and expect people to call you and, 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 and make, make it happen for you. You've got to kind of do it yourself. So I was imagining all this time, but I just had to do it. So I put this imagination on paper. I uh, talked to some people to help me produce it, and boom, Thelma came out in 2011. Uh, it was a, a really challenging uh, but uh, uh, fulfilling film because uh, fortunately, it, it kind of validated my imaginations. I took home, we took home a lot of awards. We won in Mexico, we won in, in Madrid, and my, my lead actress here won some pretty, pretty heavy uh, Best Actress Awards. So it kind of validated that, you know what? I can actually use this imagination thing. This can actually make a life for me. And I still pursued, I kept going, and I kept going. Of course, I can talk longer about this, but we only have about 10 minutes here. So, so after Thelma, I, uh, I pursued and I pursued, and I made a, uh, another film. I didn't direct this one, though. I, I just produced this. And actually, Transit was, if ever, that, that, that turning point in your life where, um, if you all have one, Transit was it for me. Um, I emptied my bank account. Nobody wanted to fund this film. I had nobody to partner up with me. So I emptied up my bank account. I uh, even put my apartment and my car up for, uh, for mortgage. Or, and I made transit. This was with a first-time filmmaker. She was a young lady, Hannah Espia. And people thought I was crazy. Why the hell are you investing your life into this? I think she was about 24, 25 years old. Because I just believe in the story. It's a story that must be told. And long story short, for about a year, we, we, we made the film. It premiered in a Cinemalaya Film Festival. I think it took on pretty much every award that evening. Uh, it became the Philippine entry to the Oscars. We didn't get the short list, but it got me my life back. I got to meet this gentleman named Dean Devlin, uh, who acquired the film and put my life back on track in terms of financial uh, gain. It was... Uh, uh, I said, we need to have a photo. Uh, Dean Devlin is the producer of Independence Day, Godzilla. He has a movie called Geostorm coming out. He produces Liberian. So these guys, 
uh, a Hollywood uh, big shot, if, 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 uh, how you call it. Uh, he watched my film through a friend of mine who worked in Sony Pictures, and he emailed me about three weeks later saying, I don't know, a lot of people in Hollywood like to swear, so effing great film, man. We need to talk. You know? Okay, yes. I literally flew to Los Angeles. I met him, and this is like, you know, being picked up by the limo. It was just like literally from like sweating in coffee shops in Manila, imagining the story, and we went to Tel Aviv, Israel to shoot. We were like 20 people, crazy people, to now this uh, Hollywood uh, producer's office. We, pr we, we premiered in several festivals, and then we, uh, we were the Philippine entry at the Oscars, and, you know, he acquired the film, and he showed it all over North America. So, you know, transit was a really uh, turning point for the company as well, the company that I started with a, with a good friend of mine, uh, Mark, but uh, he's, he's not here now. But we were just two crazy kids. And I think you need to be a little crazy in this industry, and I guess maybe in the world. I mean, there are some crazy people running countries now, right? So <laughs> that's a different talk. For every imagination, expect challenges. And I cannot stress this enough because, you know, when we're in our room, aircon on, we can imagine about the good life. But I think for every imagination, there's three or four nightmares that want to break it down. And you've just got to be strong. You've just got to be strong. Uh, you've got to be passionate about what you do. And if you are passionate, I always say I look for passionate driven people because passion kind of separates. Uh, the people that just say they want to do it and people that are passionate about it because when the going gets tough, the passionate people hang on. And I like to work with people like that. Moving forward, I, uh, in my advertising days, I got to work a lot with Manny Pacquiao, considered one of the best boxers of all time, boxers of all time. So let's just talk about the boxing. I met him on a lot of commercial sets and one day he told me, Paul, can you make a film? about my childhood. And I said, of course. And I, my challenge here was, of course, putting his story on script, which is just you know, cinematic already. So we had to choose a portion of his, of his life. But as I was moving forward, uh, I did have some investors in this, because the, the, the budget was quite huge. A lot of the investors asked me, do you have a contract with uh, Manny Pacquiao? I said, he told me he wanted me to do his film. But that ain't a contract. I mean, like, he signed. I said, you know what? Oh, my God, I've been working for about a year, and I don't even have a contract with the guy. Who knows? Maybe he forgot that he told me this, right? I don't know. So long story short, I flew to General Santos City with a contract in hand. I had to talk to several of his lawyers, and uh, I had to go back to Manila, back and forth, back and forth. Until finally, we got that contract signed. <laughs> this is literally in his home. And that greenlit the film. I mean, everything was ready, and then the investor signed the checks. Okay, we're in, le we're in legal business now, so, you know, never trust a handshake, I guess, right? That's what they say. Kid Kolofu did very well for me. It also brought me all over the world. Again, places that I could not have imagined it brought me to. So the power of imagination is that Einstein quotes is, is really, you know, hitting home to me now. I always say this, align your imaginations with others that can help you. Sometimes half the job is just working with equally talented people or people that are even more talented with you. You know, growing up, I tried to get the best cinematographers, the best production designers, because I said, you know what, if I make a bad film, at least it looked good. So that's what I do. And I love to align myself with people that think like me, are passionate like me, and you know, we can make great films. One of those films was this, Hele Sahiwagang Hapis, or A Lullaby to the Sorrowful Mystery, uh, the English uh, translation. We brought together two of the biggest stars in, in, in the Philippines for the first time. I think ABS-CBN was even quite shocked how we were able to do that. But I guess, you know, story conquers all, and these two actors just believed in it. I got to work with a visionary called Lav Diaz. He currently won the best picture at the Venice Film Festival, regarded as the biggest prize in Philippine cinema. I produced this film because I just wanted to learn from him. So this was my education. I said, okay, I'm going to invest in the film, but I get to learn from a master. And not only did I learn from Lav Diaz, I mean, I learned from him the, really the passion of cinema. This film is eight hours long. Not for everybody. Long story short again, I wish I could tell you the whole thing. We made the film. He tells me it's eight hours long, Paul. That's eight hours. I'm not cutting a second. I was like, okay. Uh, we get a call from Berlin International Film Festival saying that they love the movie, but they need to make it four or five hours because it would not fit in the program. They were going to put it in competition. So I go back to Love. 
I said, love, four hours, we got to cut half. And I know we can do it because I, you know, I, you know, I know we can do it. And he goes, Paul, you know, and, and his, he's very poetic. He goes, it would be you know, unjust and unpatriotic of us or if we do cut this film. The Filipinos need to see the eight hours. They need to suffer with me. <laughs> but I'm suffering. I said, I've got money in this. You know, Berlin, competition, the market. We're going to sell this. After convincing, convincing, even trying to cut it myself, which I know he didn't like, I had to call up Berlin and say, you know what, eight hours, take it or leave it. They, they deliberated and thankfully they accepted it. They accepted it. And we had, a, I think we were the first film in the Berlin International Film Festival of History that had a premiere at eight in the morning. <laughs> so then again, my imagination taking me to places I never thought I would imagine. Um, and I guess the cherry on top was we won the silver bear, but for me, uh, remember I was talking about being crazy? Uh, at the awards night dinner, it was validated because I met this wonderful lady and she came up to me and uh, said, are you that crazy guy, that crazy producer that produced an eight hour film? I said, yes. I said, I, I guess you have to be a little crazy. And she goes, yes, you need to be very crazy in this industry. So I was like, great, I'm validated. And no other than Meryl Streep told me that. She was the head jury of the Berlin Festival and literally looked for the Helle team because she herself suffered with us. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, if Meryl Streep says it's okay to be crazy, then it's damn right okay to be crazy, right? Practicing your imagination brings it closer to reality because every day, guys, I think of films. I watch films. I think of it every day. I sleep. I know my wife, I know sometimes... She, I have a son now, he's five months, and I was showing him um, some Stanley Kubrick the other night, um, Full Metal Jacket, and she was like, turn that off. <laughs> I said, hey, he's going to watch it one day, right? Might as well watch it with me. So I showed him E.T., but the, the kid just slept through it. But one day he'll, he'll realize the value of films, and I, I can't wait to share that with him. So practice your imagination. Do it on a daily basis. Uh, you know... Manila is the best place to imagine because sometimes just getting to Makati, to Quezon City is hours. So, you know, put your phone in your pocket, use the mind. I want to show you a clip. I know I'm going a little over time here. It's about four minutes. This is my, uh, my future imagination. And I, I, I'm declaring it today because maybe hopefully a year or two from now you'll read about it, that I was able to do this. It's a dream film of mine. Um, the reason why I say it's a dream film is in terms of... Uh, of financing, it's huge. Even Dean Devlin had to turn me down, even though he has you know, millions and millions of dollars. But I am very passionate about the film where Manuel Quezon saved the Jews in 1939 by opening the doors of the Philippines. It's a period film. I think it's very timely today, where a lot of uh, countries today are actually closing their borders. But in 1939, the Philippines, you know, the Philippines, we just find a way to just, you know, uh, welcome people. And... Uh, Kazan opened the doors and saved over 1,300 Jews. And I pitched this film to many people. They always say, it's too big, it's, it's, it's monumental. And it is, so I want to do it correctly. So to kind of strengthen my imagination, I said, you know what, let me put, it, let me put this to this. So maybe uh, they will understand what I, what I feel and how passionate I am about this subject. Just about four minutes, please. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we can open doors for people when the world is now closing them kick it open and let them in, regardless of who they are. And, uh, you know, the Philippines, I know the Filipinos will do that. So let's, let's be an example to the world today, you know, and, and who knows. The power of imagination, guys, the power of cinema, I always say this, it can define a generation, it can create awareness, and it can spark a revolution. And I just really wish, and it's really my, my, my plea, and it's, it's, it's going to take, it's bigger than me, but I just really wish that there would just be more support government-wise, into the arts. Yes, I know we have millions of problems, but don't forget the arts. You know, arts, if you study history, if you study cultures, you look at the art and you see where they are. You know, art defines, you know, who you are. It gives you identity. Your imagination should scare you. That scares me. The scarier, the better. As Meryl Streep said, you got to be crazy, so be crazy. Before I close, I'm just happy to announce that uh, in 2017, my imagination is taking me to the wonderful island of Shargao. We're going to be making a film there in May. And I'm also going to be making a film about the Palawan culture in uh, 2017 to kind of promote 
what is the lost indigenous tribes over in Palawan. And, uh, you know, that's going to happen this year. So hopefully next year you read about it, you hear about it, or you watch it. So where has your imagination taken you? It's taken me here in front of you guys. And hopefully that story or that little experience of my last, I guess, eight, nine years, uh, you know, uh, will uh, inspire you to do, to create and to imagine. So thank you guys for listening. Appreciate your time. <laughs>